U.S. fighter jets scrambled over the nation's capital yesterday to intercept a plane that had entered restricted airspace. The military response created a sonic boom that shook neighborhoods in the area. Federal investigators say the Cessna plane crashed near the mountains of northern Virginia, but state police found no survivors. Jeff Begays is in Stanton, Virginia. Jeff, good morning. Yeah, good morning. This is where the search has been focused. You can see how rural it is, and so as a result, investigators and search crews did not have a lot of light to work with, and that's why the search for victims was suspended overnight. Now, what we know is that there were four people on board that plane, and when the pilot did not respond to air traffic control commands, that's when the fighter jets were scrambled. The cause of this crash remains under investigation, but the military says that it did not shoot that plane down. A sonic boom startled the D.C. area on Sunday. It turned out to be F-16 fighter jets headed to assess a possible threat over the nation's capital. The FAA says that it was a Cessna Model 560, like the one you see here. It was headed from a municipal airport in Tennessee to Long Island MacArthur Airport in New York. When it reversed course, later flying through restricted airspace over Washington. According to a NORAD statement, the military jets responded to intercept the plane around 3.20 p.m and even deployed flares to draw attention, but the pilot was unresponsive. By 3.30 p.m., Virginia State Police were headed toward the scene. It wasn't until nearly 8 p.m. that search teams reached the crash site on foot. Police said no survivors were found. This has the signatures of some sort of incapacitation. Robert Sumwalt chaired the National Transportation Safety Board from 2017 to 2021. One possible cause of the crash? The airplane does not pressurize properly. The pilots become hypoxic, meaning, of course, lack of oxygen. They fall asleep, as do the passengers. Because of lack of oxygen, they perish. Meanwhile, the airplane continues. The plane was registered to a Florida-based company owned by John and Barbara Rumpel. Speaking to the New York Times, John Rumpel said that his daughter, two-year-old granddaughter, her nanny, and the pilot were aboard the plane. And in a post on a Facebook page appearing to belong to Barbara Rumpel, she wrote, My family is gone, my daughter and granddaughter, changing her profile picture to one that seemed to include both. U.S. law enforcement, as well as the military, they, they drill for incidents like these planes breaching D.C. airspace. And in this case, there was this elevated posture when that happened. Now, investigators are still going to, they still have to look into the cause of this crash. That remains a mystery at this hour. In fact, the NTSB, of course, will take the lead and they will painstakingly go through the wreckage here to try to find evidence that will give them a better sense of what happened in the air. And Marie. Um, so, Jeff, you mentioned that they had to call off any sort of search last night because they just simply could not see. It was just so dark. What are the plans for resuming the search? Well, the weather out here right now is pretty ideal for any search of this magnitude. The temperatures are down. You know, there isn't a lot of uh, sunshine out, but just enough that they're able to sift through what wreckage they found. They found wreckage at about 8 p.m., and at that time, they had to suspend the search because, as you can see, and as I pointed out earlier, this is a pretty rural area. This is not the kind of, uh, these are not the kinds of conditions or environment where you want to search at night because not only can you contaminate some of the evidence, but mm. you can also, somebody could get hurt. And so that's uh, probably uh, part of the reason why they suspended the search overnight. Mm -hmm. um, the FAA, you know, confirmed that the plane was headed to Long Island. That they, It didn't seem to be flying in the right direction if it was heading to Long Island. Do we know anything about, you know, a flight plan that was registered and whether it was deviating from that plan? Well, usually you have to file a flight plan, so that's the kind of information mm. that we expect to get from the NTSB. They are really good at investigating 
uh, crashes like these. They are among the best in the world in terms of investigating what happened. They're going to look for the plane's black boxes, uh, which will also give them a sense of any communication at all on board the plane. Because, as you heard Robert Sumwalt, the former chairman of the NTSB, say that, you know, in situations like these, when you don't have a pilot or people on board responding, the, the worst case scenario is what he outlined, that you, there was this loss of pressurization, you fall asleep and, and perish. And, and, you know, the people that we talk to say that those kinds of incidents are rare, but they do happen approximately uh, one time every three or four years. Hmm. You would think in a, you know, I would think a, a Cessna that's being well kept, something like that wouldn't be a risk. But, hey, you never know. And we'll have to wait for this thorough investigation, right? Um, Jeff, thank you very much.